Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be doing a first impression and a wear test on the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Foundation, the concealer, and the powder. So if you would like to see me test out these three products in a 10 hour wear test, please keep watching. So I tried out that infamous pink waiver that's all over social media. I got mine off of Amazon and this is what it looks like. And, and then I saw a couple of people put mousse in their hair after they were done to get that like wet look and I'm just kind of like, like I spent 30 minutes applying heat onto my hair just to get my hair to look how it does when I just let it like air dry and I scrunch it. So I don't think I'm going to be using that thing anymore. But I think that if you don't have naturally curly hair, this would be a good investment for you because I think it's under $30. Just like, I don't know, I'm kind of just like eh about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and prep my skin and then I will read you guys some information about this foundation. It's been a while since I've done a foundation first impression, so I'm kind of like all over the place. So my new favorite primer is this Wet n Wild Primer Serum. It's a hydrating one. I really, really like this. And I do have dry skin if you are new to my channel. Right now it's kind of like a normal to dry. It just depends, honestly. The packaging, it is just a plastic squeeze tube and then it does have a pump, which is amazing. This just says Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. I have the shade 200 Nude. It says medium buildable coverage, no harsh ingredients, anti-pollution, anti-oxidant, anti-blue light oil free. And you do get 0.75 full ounces and usually the standard size for a foundation is one full ounce. So it's just below that. But I do like this packaging. It's super like convenient. Like I like the glass bottles and everything. Like glass bottles with a pump are like my favorite. But I do like how this looks and it still has a pump. So I wish other people would put pumps on their foundations. Even if it meant switching over to this kind of like plastic tube thing. So I purchased mine from Ulta. So that's where I'm going to pull up the information from. So on Ulta.com, this retails for $10.99. But a lot of times they have like a buy one get one 50% off. This is also rated 4 out of 5 stars. It says, Revlon Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation is a skincare inspired foundation that's ultra blendable, ultra buildable, and infused with antioxidants, anti-pollution, and anti-blue light ingredients. A creamy texture that goes on like a moisturizer, then blends invisibly to even out skin tone weightlessly. It comes in 31 shades. Medium buildable coverage, natural finish, keep skin feeling moisturized all day. This says, blend onto skin for medium buildable coverage and a natural finish for best results, finish with setting powder. It says you can also use a sponge, brush, or fingers. So as always, I'm gonna do one side with a brush and then one side with a damp sponge. I'm just gonna give this a quick shake. I don't know how I feel about the shade that I picked out, so I guess we'll see. It might be a little dark, I don't know. So I'm just gonna start off with two pumps. I mean, it looks pretty thick. When I was reading the description, it kind of reminded me of the Too Faced Do You or Do Me. Is it Do Me Foundation? The one that smells like watermelon? That's what it kind of reminded me of. So that's the shade. I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to do this side with a sponge first. I'm just going to dip in here and apply it. So I feel like it kind of smells like the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation just not as painty because that one smells like paint. This one kind of smells like that, but not as bad. So it looks like we're getting, I'm gonna try to build this up to medium. Cause I feel like I've been like seriously like picking the crap out of my face. I know it's so bad. I feel like with the whole like quarantine thing, I just come in this room, I flip my mirror over to where I can really see and I just like go to town and I really need to knock that off. So I have a lot to cover today, but it looks really nice. Look at that. It still looks like skin. And it doesn't feel heavy at all, which I think was one of the claims. I think it said weightless. I'm gonna do some down on my neck. I really thought the shade was gonna be too dark, but I think it's perfect. Okay, so that is two pumps. 
I don't know if I would say that's a medium coverage. I guess. And to me, it looks like it's drying down to more so like a matte finish. I think it said natural finish, right? But that to me kind of looks more matte. So I'm going to do two more pumps. And then I'm going to do this side with my Tarte foundation brush. Normally when I apply my foundation, just like on an everyday basis, I like to use a sponge and it doesn't matter to me if I have to use like more product to build up. You know what I mean? Like I know a lot of people like to use brushes because you get more coverage with a brush than you do with a sponge. So therefore you don't have to use as much foundation, but I just prefer a sponge in general, but I think I like the brush. Cause like, look how much coverage I'm getting with the brush. And I still have a lot of product left on the back of my hand. So I think for right now, the best way would be to apply it with a brush first and then go over it with a sponge just to get rid of like brush strokes. Cause that two pumps went a long way on this side and I still have like a half a pump left on the back of my hand. And then the two pumps on here like I used all of it and I definitely have way more coverage on this side. Okay, so this is the side with a brush, way more coverage. Still have a lot on the back of my hand. This is the side with the sponge and I used two full pumps. Yeah, I like this side more. So I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna go over this side with it in the areas that I need more coverage. I'm just kind of pressing that into the skin and then I'm going to go over everything with my sponge because for some reason I can never apply foundation on my nose with a brush. It just like does not want to stick. So I'm just kind of being sloppy with this and then I'll go over it with a sponge. Back in with a sponge and just over everything. So I have eye cream on and I stopped applying eye cream on the days that I know I'm going to wear makeup because I noticed that the makeup does not sit well on top of that and it looks horrible underneath my eyes right now. So I'm just going to take a makeup wipe and I'm going to try to wipe off some of that eye cream that I applied and then go back over it because that does not look good. Okay, that looks so much better. So this is what my skin looks like up close. I feel like it kind of clung to a few dry patches and I know it said natural finish, but to me it's definitely pulling more matte and it went straight into my forehead crease, which is my favorite. Let's see if I can pounce that out. I feel like I didn't really get any coverage on my forehead. I don't know. I could still see things, but I don't want to put any more foundation on because like I said, it's pulling like pretty matte. But it does look like skin. Like, for medium coverage, I feel like I can still see a lot of things. Which is okay as long as I have a full coverage concealer. So I guess we're really going to see what this concealer can do. But I don't know. So far, I'm just kind of like, this is a maybe for now. So, now we have the concealer I'm going to be trying out. So it just looks the exact same as the foundation, just a smaller version. This I have in the shade... 15 light says concealer with caffeine antioxidants anti-pollution anti-blue light without sulfates no harsh fragrances oil-free medium coverage i do think it's cute that they just made the concealer look like a mini version of the foundation i really like that i think that's cute so i actually purchased my concealer from cvs but they do have it on ulta.com this retails for 9.99 and it's rated four stars out of five and again, like I said, like Ulta always does the like buy one, get one 50% off. So just keep a lookout for that. Or they have the $3.50 off coupon all the time. So this says Revlon Photo Ready Candid Antioxidant Concealer is a skincare inspired concealer that's ultra blendable, ultra buildable and infused with antioxidants, anti-pollution and anti-blue light ingredients. Suitable for sensitive skin, camouflages, under eye puffiness, bags and dark circles. It comes in 18 different shades. Doe foot applicator, perfect for applying to delicate eye area. Medium, buildable coverage, natural finish. Says use plush applicator to apply product directly to areas where needed to cover under eye circles and blemishes. Blend into skin with fingers, sponge, or brush for best results. 
And then it says use the Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation along with it. So I always like to blend out my concealer with a brush first because I feel like I get the most coverage and then I go over everything with a sponge. So that's what I'm going to do today. Ooh, that is a weird looking doe foot. Oh, and it's yellow. Great. I hate yellow concealers. It just does not look good on me unless I have a tan. And right now I'm super pale, so this is going to look awful. Great. Ugh. I'm seriously cringing while I'm looking at this. The applicator is a little weird, but I don't hate it. But oh my gosh, you guys, this concealer shade is not for me. Like, I don't understand, like, why they can't just make... Like, when you buy a light shade of concealer, it should be a light shade. I don't know why people always make the lighter shades, like, a yellow undertone. I don't know. I just... Not a big fan. So even if I do like this concealer, I'm only going to be able to wear it when I have a tan because this yellow is killing me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I'm going to use my Morphe E45. Maybe when I blend it out, it won't pull as yellow. It does seem like it's drying down pretty quickly. So when I'm looking in the viewfinder, it looks like nice coverage. Like it looks kind of full, but when I look up close, I can still see like everything. But it seems like the shade is blending out nice. Like it doesn't look as yellow now that I have it blended out, but still that's not, I don't like that. <laughs> so I'm just going to do the center of my face with my sponge. And I don't think I like the formula. Like, I don't like how this concealer feels. It feels like, I don't know, it doesn't feel creamy. It just feels like really like thin and just weird. I don't know. So I just went over the center of my face with the sponge, which is what I used to apply the foundation, and it pulled off. It pulled it off right here and on my chin. Can you guys see that? It just took off all the concealer. How weird. Why did it do that? Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. I don't know why it did that yet. Okay, so it looks so cakey right here. And when I tried to use a sponge, it pulled off my foundation. Same with my chin. I'm pretty sure I heard really good things about the foundation and the concealer, hence why I bought them. But, oh my gosh, I am not a big fan. I'm going to try to apply some more concealer because it did say it was buildable. So I guess we'll see. It doesn't look horrible underneath my eyes, but for some reason it does not want to stick onto my nose or in between my brows or here, which is weird. I need to cover up that pimple, we'll see. I did buy the glowy version of this too, so maybe I'll like that one better. We'll see. I'm just gonna use my brush to see if I can get some more coverage. Okay, so I feel like I was able to add more coverage underneath my eyes but I still just don't like the shade of this. So now I'm going to try to blend out the center of my face and see what happens. Yeah, it's just not wanting to stick on the center of my face for some reason. Like now that I'm blending it out with the brush and not the sponge, it's still doing the same thing. I don't know what is happening. I mean, it looks better with a brush, but it's still like pulling up the foundation. Let's try my finger, I guess. No. Oh my god finger just made it worse. In between my brows looks better, but I feel like the more I mess with it, the worse it's getting. Yeah, my nose looks horrible. My under eyes look okay. My chin looks bad. Ugh. You know what? Thank goodness everybody is quarantined now and nobody has to see me like this, except for you guys. <laughs> oh, This is one of those like foundation concealer days that I would be embarrassed to go in public because I feel like people will look at me and be like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how bad I, that's how bad it is. And you know, it's just going to get worse when I put on the powder. So yay. Yikes. How does this have four stars? I'm about to just 
look at the negative reviews and see see what that says. You know what's weird too is I have the shade light 15, right? And it was super yellow, but the swatch on here doesn't look yellow at all. And they even have a 001 shade called banana that looks like this. Like the swatch on here looks like this. And this is 15 light. So it looks like I needed, according to this, I bet it's wrong, but this looks like I needed the shade 10 vanilla. Like that looks more of like a neutral. It went on an almost perfect match when it dried. It was noticeably brown because I'm so fair and don't have yellow undertones that most manufacturers choose to use. It's tough to find a match. Okay, so she's talking about being yellow undertone, which is what my complaint was. This says, this stuff sucks, doesn't do what it's supposed to, and doesn't conceal anything. I kind of agree with that. I was really excited to try this product when... I saw an article about it. Unfortunately, it lacks coverage for even minor issues. I agree with that. Uh, issues like redness under the nose or discoloration under my eyes. It dries really fast. Agree. Patchy increase. Okay, yeah, it's patchy. Patchy spots on my skin. Yep, that happened to me. So I'm looking at the bad reviews for the foundation. This says, this is one of the worst she's ever tried. It made her skin oily. It oxidized and it started to fade within a couple of hours. It says the matching concealer isn't great either. I'm a huge fan of the Revlon and Colorstay is my go-to foundation. I really wanted to like this, but it's not buildable. It doesn't have good coverage. It sinks into lines around her nose. It made her pores appear more prominent and it gets greasy. Terrible shade range, poor coverage. One of the worst foundations I've ever tried. It said, but once I added the concealer and powder, it turned my face into a disaster and she had to take off all her makeup. That's how I'm feeling right now. So this review says that it clung to every single dry patch no, ma no matter how much moisturizer she used. And then this is why do all drugstore fair shades have to be yellow undertone? That is my biggest complaint because it doesn't make any sense to me. But moving on, oh my God, you guys, it's just gonna, it's gonna get so bad real fast. So I'm gonna be trying out the Candid Anti-Pollution Setting Powder. Was it Tati that I heard rave about this foundation? Let me know if you watched her video. Did she rave about the original or the dewy one? Because I want to try the dewy one now that I don't like this. Anyway, so this says anti pollution setting powder. I have the shade 001. This only comes in two shades. This retails for $9.99. Like I said, it comes in two shades. It has four stars out of five. It says, a loose setting powder infused with antioxidants and anti-pollution ingredients. Lightweight airbrushed finish for a blurring effect. Two universal shades, non-whitening, non-chalky, no mess packaging with sifter. How to use, apply loose powder with a brush and a buffing motion to even out skin and set makeup. Reapply as needed throughout the day. Will you do lift this up? You know, it's weird. So I'm pretty sure I bought this from Ulta.com and what's weird is there's no clear packaging. Like even my other ones that have like the sifter that you lift up, there's always like a pull plastic thing to pull off and this didn't have one. So that's weird. Okay, so I'm just going to take my favorite powder brush. This is a Morphe E1. I'm going to dip into the powder. That's what it looks like. I'm going to swirl around in the cap. I don't mind the packaging, so I don't know why people are complaining about it, but... I don't think I'm going to use this powder to set my under eyes, because if I think if I do that, it's all over. Like, maybe I can try to make this work, but I know if I try to apply this powder on my under eyes, it's gonna be game over. I mean, so far I don't hate the powder. It feels like it set the foundation really nice. It doesn't look like it's altering the shade of the foundation either. Set my forehead. I'm so nervous to look up close. Ah. I mean, the powder feels nice and like soft and buttery. So if anything, this might be the only thing that I use from this line because I don't like the other two things so far. Okay, I'm gonna look up close. Mm. I don't hate the powder. I don't feel like it ruined the foundation at all. It definitely blurred it out, that's for sure. Up here though, it kind of just, yeah, up here is just completely ruined. Like there is no going back, there's no fixing that. It just looks horrible, my nose still looks bad. 
my chin looks blurred but it still looks patchy the only thing that looks good is my neck and my cheeks but everything else does not look good so here's what my skin looks like with the foundation concealer and the powder mm -mm -mm. yikes so it is 1.36 right now. So let's go ahead and make that the call time. So 1.30 is the call time. I'm going to finish up the rest of my makeup. <laughs> and I'll be back to let you guys know if I can fix this mess. Oh my god. So I'm back from putting on the rest of my makeup. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys everything that I used. And then I'll tell you guys what I really think. So, so for bronzer, I used my L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze in the shade Light. This did not go on very well at all and I just used it yesterday and it was perfect so yeah this did not go on very well it went on like really patchy and just not not well at all and then I didn't like how it went on my forehead but I was able to blend it out so I guess that's all that matters but yeah it did not apply well at all on top of this mess to contour my cheeks and my forehead and my nose I used the LA girl just blushing blush in the shade just because this is, I mean, to me, this is not a blush shade. This is like the perfect contour shade for porcelain, fair to light skin tones. I love it. I've been using it a lot. For a blush, I use the Wet n Wild Fantastic Plastic Pink. I forgot how much I love the shade of this blush. Like, it's the perfect, like, Barbie doll pink. It does look like there's glitter in it. There is glitter in it, but it never shows up on the face. So, I don't know. It's weird. Then for highlighter, I use this Milani highlighter in the shade Afterglow is what it looks like and I decided that I would just skip any kind of eye makeup today so I didn't even put bronzer in my crease so I'm not doing any mascara I'm not doing any of that because I don't think <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep all this on for 10 hours because that's how much I don't like it but anywho what else did I use oh for lips I used my LA girl perfect precision lip liner in the shade cafe you guys have to buy these lip liners. They're so dang good. Um, I would get Cafe and Bear. Those are my two favorite shades. And they're like 2 or $3. They're so cheap. For lipstick, I use the Maybelline Baddest Beige Lipstick. For my brows, um, I've only used this once before. And I used it again today. And I kind of like it. This is from CoverGirl. And what shade is this? I don't even know. 715. So I don't know what the name of the shade is, if there is a name, but it's just like the CoverGirl pomade. So it's kind of like a dupe for the... So it's the same concept as the Benefit. Is this the Cabral? Yeah. So it's like the exact same thing. So this little thing comes out in the brush. I didn't use that though. Just like I don't use the brush in this one either. I use my Anastasia number 12 eyebrow brush. But this isn't bad. Like I like this and I think... It's kind of like a darker, taupier, light brown shade. But since my roots, like I have the shadow root, so she just made my roots a little bit darker and then pulled it down. I'm able to make my eyebrows darker, so I kind of like it. So I've been using like darker eyebrow shades. Anyways, and then to set my brows, I use the Essence Make Me Brow and Blondie Brows just to lighten them up a little bit. Then to set my face, which I think is what kind of saved my makeup from looking like flat like that's the best word to describe this makeup I used my MAC fix plus and then I spray this real quick and before this dries I go on top with an actual setting spray so I just use the morphe continuous setting mist and then I just used my handy dandy fan from Amazon and I feel like that kind of brought a little bit life back to my face but I'm still not liking this like it looks better, I'll give it that, but my nose still looks horrible. Like when I was trying to contour my nose, like I always contour my nose. I like couldn't even like blend the cream contour shade, so I gave up. And then I just like patted over it with the foundation brush just to try to erase it. And then I went over it with the LA Girl contour thing, contour blush shade. And it like, it was just like taking off the foundation and concealer. Like it was just not working out I feel like I fixed it as well as I can like I fixed it as good as I can get it is where I'm at right now but the center of my eyebrows still looks so bad I do have bangs so that kind of helps because you won't even be able to see it but still you shouldn't even have to worry about it you know my nose looks bad my chin looks bad so really just here looks horrible and then I used my Laura Mercier secret brightening powder to set my concealer but <laughs> 
This didn't crease, like normally concealer creases so much on my eyelids, but it didn't crease at all and it didn't crease on my under eyes either. But I hate the shade of it. Like this right here underneath both of my eyes, like this area in particular is pulling yellow so much. It's driving me absolutely insane. Like yellow concealers do not look good on me unless I have a tan and I do not have a tan. So the shade of that is really bothering me like right here. But other than that, like I think my cheeks look good. My cheeks... My neck and my jaw look fine, but everywhere in the center of my face is a, is a shit show. And like, I hate my under eyes. Like they look so bad, but that's just because the shade of this concealer is yellow. But anyways, let me zoom you guys in so you can see what my skin looks like up close. So this is what I look like. Hopefully you can see everything I was just telling you. So the call time's 1.30. It's probably like two o'clock now. Yeah, 159 right now. So I'm gonna come back in four hours. I usually do like a four hour check-in, an eight hour check-in, and then two hours later is like my final check-in. But I, no promises this time, am I gonna be able to keep this on for 10 hours? Like I will try my hardest, but if this starts to look even worse, there's no way it's gonna get better, right? There's just, just, there's just no way it's gonna get any better. But anyways, I'll try to keep it on as long as I possibly can. So I will try to come back in four hours, but if it starts to look ridiculous in two hours, I'll come back sooner. So we'll just see. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go throughout my day. Thank goodness I am not going anywhere today because I'd be so embarrassed for people to see how this looks. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I'll see you guys here in a little bit. Hey guys, so I'm running a little bit behind. Story of my life. I'm doing a check-in. It's 6.15, so I've had this foundation on for five hours I believe and I decided that I was going to organize all my lip products today so I went down that rabbit hole and that lasted about four hours and I'm still not done so I'm currently taking everything off my lax and putting all my liquid lipsticks together my lip glosses and my lipsticks and oh my gosh like I need to do like a declutter video ASAP but let's go ahead and look at this surprisingly it looks better than it did five hours ago. This right here doesn't look as cakey anymore. Neither does my chin or my nose. Cheeks still look good. It went into my laugh line right here. Other than that, I mean, it looks better now, so maybe I will keep it on for the full 10 hours. Here's what my skin looks like up close. Yeah, for some reason, it just doesn't look as cakey now that it, everything just kind of like settled into my skin. Still don't like it, but it does look better. So I'll see you guys back here in about three hours for my eight hour check-in. Hey guys, so I'm back for my final check-in. It's 9.21, so I've had this foundation on for eight hours. I decided that I'm not going to keep it on for the full 10 hours because... There's like honestly like no point. I'm never gonna wear this again. But I just wanted to look up close and see what it looks like. Mm, it looks really greasy right here, which is pretty normal for me. For some reason, my entire face is dry, but right here is always oily. Even when I don't wear makeup throughout the day, if I just have moisturizer on, like this spot is always oily all the time. So that's pretty normal. Like I said in my last check-in, it looks better than it did when I first applied it, but I'm not trying to wait three, four, five hours for it to look good. Like, I don't want to go in public and it look all crusty, cakey, and patchy, and then five hours later it looks good. You know what I mean? So this is going to be like a hard pass for me, even the concealer. Like, I could probably use the foundation again, honestly, but... Actually, no, I can't. <laughs> Why am I lying to myself? Um, maybe these would be better if they were separate, like maybe together they're just not a good combination. Since I don't have a lot of yellow undertone concealers because that is not something that I intentionally buy, the only um, yellow undertone concealer I have is the Born This Way Sculpting Concealer from Too Faced, and I use that whenever I have a self-tan. So I'll probably just keep this just to try again after I do another self-tan because it is yellow and that's the only time I feel like that looks good. So I'm going to try this with like a different foundation and see how I feel about it, but this is just, like I said, I'm not going to even get any use out of this because I'm only tan like a a few times out of the year so yeah I don't know I would still pass on the concealer there's way better options at the drugstore than this this is 10 bucks you can get the Maybelline fit me concealer I think for five or under you can get what else do I like you can get the 
new Maybelline 24 hour Superstay concealer. I think that is probably around $10, but that is so good. That's my favorite drugstore concealer at the moment. So there, those are just a couple that you can pick up that are a, a thousand times better than this Revlon Candid. Like I can't, I can't deal with that. Um, like I said, the foundation, I don't know. I don't feel like it was a natural finish. I don't feel like it was even medium coverage. Like I didn't hate it, but I don't like it. Like there's there's just so many other foundations that I like more. Again, for example, um, for like a natural finish, I almost feel like the Maybelline Matte and Poreless is more of like a natural finish on me. Like it's not super matte. I think that would be a good option. The Rimmel Lasting Finish Foundation, I think it's the 25 hour foundation. That's a really nice like buildable, actually like light, medium to full coverage, natural finish foundation. Like this, oh. Oh my gosh, like I said, it's been a while since I've tried a foundation that I absolutely hated. I did pick up the glowy version of this though, so I'm going to try that one and then hopefully that one's better. But yeah, this is a hard pass for me. Um, and I thought I liked the powder, but I take that back. I don't like that. I think this is part of the reason why my bronzer like wouldn't blend out. Like this kind of feels like, if you guys remember when... This was a long time ago. So when translucent powder was first like a thing, e.l.f. came out with one. It's weird to me because it says in the description that this is not chalky, but it is. So that is like the first thing that comes to mind is that old e.l.f. translucent like HD powder that they came out with seriously probably like six or seven years ago. Like <laughs> that reminds me of this. But yeah, um, I would do a hard pass on the foundation the concealer and the powder. There's much better. Like I said, Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder is really good. Cody Airspun, you get a big old tub of that for like five bucks. That's a really good translucent powder. The CoverGirl uh, Minerals Loose Powder, I can't remember exactly what it is called. Those are really good drugstore powders. So yeah, definitely skip out on these, especially if you have dry skin. But let me know if you guys have tried the foundation, concealer, or the powder and what you think. I'm actually like pretty upset about it, like how none of them worked out. I was really looking forward to it. I mean, I spent $30 on all these and they just didn't work. So I mean, that kind of sucks. But maybe they would work better for oily skin. Let me know if you have oily skin and if you've tried any of these and you like it. Also, if you have dry skin, I want to know if you guys like these as well. So maybe when I try the, maybe I'll do like a two day wear test when I try the glowy version of this and then I can do the glowy version with my regular concealer, regular powder, and then I can do like a day two and I can do the glowy foundation with the concealer in this powder. So maybe we can just give it another go. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my foundation, concealer, and powder first impression on the Revlon Photo Ready Candid. Please subscribe if you haven't already and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this foundation, concealer, and powder first impression and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.